Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a show independent of corporate and commercial interest. We show Chicago area grassroots media and provide an open space for locally produced media. Hi, I'm Darth Invader. I'm standing in the middle of Federal Plaza, downtown Chicago, where we've gathered to mark the unfortunate two-year anniversary of the start of the Iraq War. We've been here before, and I think everyone will remember the historic takeover of Lakeshore Drive in 2003 that began on this very spot when thousands of angry Chicagoans turned out to protest the war. This year, we are back to tell the world that Chicago still says no to war and occupation. We have a lot to share with you today. Indie media reporters have been out on the streets all day covering this rally and the events leading up to it. We'll begin after this, so please stay with us. Tired of peace, prosperity, and a clean environment? Ready to lose millions of those bothersome jobs? Want to get your children out of the house and into Iraq? Too many freedoms and opportunities keeping you up at night? Think the rich just aren't rich enough? Then call for my free presidential misinfotapes now. These misinfotapes are guaranteed to get you off course and keep you divided. Call 2-800-BUSH Industries. We have an entire cabinet standing by to bankrupt your nation and serve every corporate interest. Call 2-800-BUSH Industries today. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. I'm Darth Invader. Since the Iraq War began, Chicago has seen many rallies here at Federal Plaza, including the big one in 2003, which set the stage for the takeover of Lakeshore Drive. Let's revisit that historic event now. In March 2003, the United States invaded Iraq. But certainly not everyone in the United States participated in the invasion or even agreed with it. On the contrary, in the months before the war, in the days when war was officially declared, and in the subsequent years when war became occupation, many Americans openly objected to George W. Bush's decision to launch a war against Iraq for what amounted to non-reasons. Chicago, the third most populous city in the United States was a major epicenter of public objection to the war. On February 15, 2003, tens of millions of people worldwide participated in the largest coordinated anti-war protest in history, even before the war became official. Some 7,000 Chicago protesters gathered in the bitter winter cold on Devon Avenue on Chicago's north side. The war-making machine nevertheless continued, but organizing and protest also continued. The Chicago City Council even approved a resolution against the war. The chorus of protests reached their crescendo on March 20, 2003, the day after the U.S. officially declared war against Iraq. Emergency protests crisscrossed the globe. Chicagoans took part by taking to the streets in a protest that would make history. About 17,000 protesters peacefully marched with police permission on Lakeshore Drive, a six-lane highway adjacent to downtown Chicago. After the march, protesters expected to march down the high-class shopping district of Michigan Avenue, but the police forced a standoff at the intersection of Michigan and Oak. Then police responded with violence and with mass arrests even arresting passers-by who had nothing to do with the protest. In all, some 860 people were arrested, more than in the famous 1968 Chicago protests against the Democratic National Convention. The intimidation didn't work. A follow-up march on March 21, 2003 attracted even more protesters than the day before. Protesters even began pursuing a class action lawsuit against the police and the city of Chicago, which still continues. Meanwhile, the war became an occupation, and the resistance in Iraq raised the costs of the ordeal and the skepticism of everyday Americans. Amid this climate, on March 20, 2004, on the first anniversary of the Lakeshore Drive protest, Chicago protesters again assembled in the thousands at Michigan and Oak, to finish the march stopped a year earlier by the police. Now the struggle against the war extended to the struggle for free speech rights and civil liberties, as the city of Chicago and Chicago Mayor Daley 
hoping to win Homeland Security funds for the city budget, now strove mightily to quelch any large-scale dissent in Chicago. The city refused to grant a permit for a 2004 peace march down Michigan Avenue, and police threatened arrests and even deemed the entire gathering illegal. A standoff between protesters and police led to a forced march rerouting away from high-profile Michigan Avenue to low-profile Clark Street. Meanwhile, the occupation in Iraq continued, and the quagmire would increase the cost to the United States in dollars and in lives. Which brings us to Saturday, March 19, 2005. Another day of protest for peace and intimidation by police and another attempt to finish the march ended at Michigan and Oak. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. Are you a freedom-loving American? Do you cherish your right to privacy? Thanks to Bush, law enforcement can search your property without a warrant. How about your right to a fair trial? The Bush administration has imprisoned hundreds of innocent people for no apparent reason. And free speech? The FBI now tracks anti-war protesters. Where are our rights, Mr. President? The Bush administration, watching you. But I used to be in high school in New York City public schools, and I know that every year um, we had to fight for our budget. Like every year they'd start threatening to cut it, and that we'd have to fire like five or ten teachers, which is huge, and like, and it was a small, it was a small school, and so every year you have to go down to the city council and be like, please don't cut the budget, and I, I organized several um, rallies against the budget cuts in high schools and also in the um, city colleges there, and it was just, it was ridiculous that like, we had no money for this, and yet we're spending $5 billion a month in Iraq and Afghanistan. It just seems kind of wrong. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. I'm Darth Invader here at the Federal Plaza in Chicago. Now we continue with our ongoing coverage of the protests and events surrounding the second anniversary of the start of the Iraq War. I ain't we're here to oppose this unjust war and to get information out to our fellow residents about the cost of this war from people right here in this city. This is a war that has cost $2.1 billion from Chicago taxpayers alone, more than $11 billion of tax dollars from Illinois residents, and over $200 billion of tax dollars from people across the United States. So this is an unjust, deadly, costly war that is taking vital funds away from things like health care, housing, in this city, money that could go for the CTA and our public schools. That's the message that we wanted to take out to the streets today. And we wanted to go where the people were. And we were denied that right because instead, the Chicago mayor, Richard Daley, and his stooges in the police department, they canceled the Constitution and chose instead to cancel our civil liberties. Well, clearly, first and foremost, the police targeted one of the most prominent public voices of the movement, and that's been Andy Thayer. Andy Thayer hadn't fired off more than a handful of sentences to the press before the police shouted, you're under arrest, Andy, and literally jumped him. We have a permit. We have a permit. calling for justice, calling for an end to the war. We ask that you do not act violently, but properly, and let us now, those of you that will, ask you that you pray. 
Well, Reverend Jakes came to the Convergence in Oak and Michigan with Andy Thayer. And Jakes worked with other people on site to actually get people to move off in a way that wouldn't create mass arrest. And then pull that column of people, instead of being forced into the ghetto that is Clark Street, pull that column of people up Dearborn in an effort to join another large convergence of people that were gathering from the south and marching north up Dearborn. We ended up stalled at Buckhouse Square for almost an hour trying to negotiate an exit route with the police. All right, we'll disperse. We'll disperse. We'll disperse from here. Well, let me tell you, Chris. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You go east or west of here, there's more than four or five in a group that are going to be arrested. Why? Because if you don't this, is a, this is a coalition of people, right? This is a coalition of people. Well, actually, a series of feeder marches converged, and we're, we're actually relatively happy with the turnout here. We think about 5,000 people, despite enormous police repression, were able to actually make it to the Federal Plaza for a legal permitted rally. Uh, one of the most powerful speakers here today has been Georgia Congresswoman Cynthia McKinney came here today from Georgia to address this crowd and to tell us to stand strong and get busy because we have a lot of work to do. Hey, hey, what do you say? Civil liberties have gone away. Hey, hey, what do you say? Civil liberties have gone away. I'm Lila Lipscomb, and I uh, came to Chicago today because yesterday I kicked off actually in Fayetteville, North Carolina, this huge international event that's taking place. And I, uh, I'm the mother in Michael Moore's movie, Fahrenheit 9-11, and I've been able to have a platform and a voice. And so what I'm doing is trying to be able to use my voice for peace. I want my son honored. I want him respected, and I want all the other mothers to be able to have their children come home safe and alive. Mine could not. So I have to fight for other mothers and other soldiers now. We should be opposing the war because it's based on lies. It has been lies from the very beginning. It continues to be about lies. And I'm sorry, Ms. Condoleezza Rice, but I do not forgive and forget. My son was an entire world to me, as every child is to a mother. I'm missing a world. You don't soon forget a world that was ripped away from you based on all lies. It's perfectly appropriate for the police themselves to march on Michigan Avenue. And it's perfectly appropriate for the Michigan Avenue Business Association to stage an annual holiday lights parade, which draws over 800,000 people to those streets. That's perfectly acceptable. So as long as it's related to commerce and consumerism, you can express all that you want as long as you're expressing it with your wallet. But if you're in fact trying to exercise free speech, if in fact you're trying to get out information about a serious political crisis in this country, about a serious war that continues to take the lives of people, innocent civilians in Iraq daily, that kind of speech is not allowed on Michigan Avenue. Brothers and sisters, we have been standing here negotiating our rights. We should not have to negotiate our rights.